Welcome back. Another Welcome episode back. of uh, Sauna Talk. Pearson, we've got Girls Gone Rx is coming up. Yeah. A very big event, very fun event. This is a national organization that we happen to host a chapter for here at yes. the Pit Stop. We've got teams from here in our gym. We've also got teams from around San Antonio. And yep. It's an awesome event. Yeah, I think it's been successful every year. That's why it keeps coming back. And again, uh, we'll, we'll tap on this at the very end, but it's for a good cause. Fantastic. Um, and we'll yeah. talk about how that good cause and fundraising can also benefit athletes in this competition. Earlier last month, we touched on the first workout, which is Barbell Blitz. There are four events. We talked through Barbell Blitz, those five rep maxes on those three movements. Let's go into these other workouts, these other three, talk about what we're looking for. And for the athletes that are joining us for this competition, this is going to be an opportunity to clear up any confusion that may be, uh, may be seen in the descriptions. We've got more detailed descriptions. We're going to make sure you're practicing and preparing for this competition in the best way. So getting into workout two, sink storm. Hence the keyword sink. sink. Perfect, right? So the RX is 2,000 meter row going into or with a dual kettlebell front rack hold into 50 synchro bar facing burpees and finishing off with 30 synchro hang power cleans. The BAM version of this workout of sync storm is a 1500 meter row. Again, dual kettlebell, kettlebell front rack holds at a lighter weight into 40 synchro bar facing burpees and 30 synchro hang power cleans at a lighter weight. So the workout begins with one athlete on the rower rowing while another athlete is holding a dual kettlebell front rack position. So if Travis is on the rower, I'm holding two kettlebells in a front rack position. Uh, rowing is only permitted while the kettlebells are maintained in the front rack hold. So if, tra if I drop the kettlebells, Travis must stop rowing. Athletes must switch between the rower and the kettlebell hold whenever the athlete holding the kettlebell needs to drop them from the front rack. So you are allowed to rotate and transition on the rower. We'll jump into that in a second. Athletes will rotate from the rest station to the rower and the rower to the dual kettleback, kettlebell front rack hold. So there's a lot going on here, y'all. It requires a ton of practice, and so, and transition to, practice. To that point, I know a lot of times the strategies on this, you'll kind of exchange as you want. The way this is laid out is it will be a rotation. So you can't just have one person rowing and the other two swapping on the front rack. Correct. When you go to change, the kettlebells must be set down. Correct. Then we must rotate in a specific fashion. So once you're done on the row, once the 2000 meters is accumulated, though you will transition to the synchronized bar facing burpees. Two athletes will work on these, synchronizing their movements, and they can switch out as frequently or infrequently as desired until all 50 reps are completed. So switch out, you're gonna have an athlete waiting on a rest station. Whenever you have someone that's ready to hop out, that person will exit, the person in the rest station will hop in, and you'll continue your work. Important part on these burpees, you must cross the bar in between the plates. Last year we had it the standard where all three athletes were doing burpees over the bar and all three had to cross between the plates and it worked out just fine. So having only two athletes to cross in between the plates should be no problem at all. Perfect. From a synchronized position, y'all, or a synchronized standpoint with the burpee over barbell, both athlete, athletes' chest must touch the ground simultaneously. So chest at the same time. When we jump over the bar, both feet must leave and land at the same time when jumping over the barbell. Athletes must face the barbell during the burpee. So what I'm seeing from this is if Travis is a faster burpeeer than me, his chest can hit the ground first. Waiting. Waiting, correct. And once my chest hits the ground, that's when the rep counts. You do not have to jump over the bar simultaneously, but you both have to make sure both feet jump over the bar and land at the same time. After completing the burpees, the team moves on to the synchronized hang power cleans. There's two synchronized points during the hang power cleans. At the hip or in between the knee and the hip, right in the quad area, the barbell must, both athletes must meet at that certain point. And then as per usual, at the top of that lift in the front right position. The synchronized is not going to be 
uh, just barbells. We have barbells and one athlete is doing a dual kettlebell hang point. So when we are looking at this, we're looking to make sure that the kettlebells are down at the same time the barbell is, and then the kettlebells are reaching the front rack at the same time the barbell is. All right, so with the band division, y'all, uh, the difference here obviously is gonna be the rope. It's 500 meters less at 1500 meters. The dual kettlebell front rack holds are gonna be two 26 pound kettlebells, and you will have 40 synchro burpees over the bar. Following the same movement standard. Correct. And then finishing off with the same rep scheme of 30 synchro hang power cleans, bam, you are following the same exact standards as the RX division. Getting into workout number three, we've got our uh, monkey medley. So the workout, the RX division workout is a 15 minute AMRAP, 60 synchro deadlifts, 50 pull-ups, 40 synchro front squats, 30 chest to bars, 20 synchro shoulder to overhead, and in the remaining time, we're looking for a max bar muscle up. The load on that is gonna be 85 pounds. Travis, question for you. Yes. In that 15 minute AMRAP, when I finish the 20 synchro shoulder overheads and go to the bar muscle ups, am I ever going back to 60 synchro deadlifts? That's a great question. You are not. The oh. AMRAP portion of this is as many reps as possible of the muscle ups, essentially using the chipper in the beginning as a buy-in. Okay. Great. For my band division, very similar layout. We've also got a 15 minute AMRAP, 60 synchro deadlifts, 50 ring rows, 40 synchro uh, front squats, 30 jumping pull ups, 20 synchro shoulder to overhead, and in the remaining time for you guys, we've got pull ups. So, just like with the RX division, once we make it through that first chipper, our buy in, so to say, we're going to do that one time through, and in the remaining time, we're accumulating as many reps as we can of the other movements. Got it. The barbell load for my BAM division is going to be 65. The barbell load for my RX division is going to be 85. On my deadlift, we've got athletes lift the barbell from the ground to a full hip and knee extension simultaneously. Barbell must touch the ground between each rep. Athlete's shoulders must be in line behind the bar at the top of the deadlift. For my deadlifts, we're gonna have two athletes working at a time with a third athlete resting in a rest, uh, a rest station, swapping out as needed. For my pull-ups, strict kipping or butterfly are allowed, full extension at the bottom with the arms locked out, chin must clearly break the horizontal plane of the bar at the top, and again with that, we're gonna have two athletes working, one athlete rests, and exchanging as we need to. On our front squats, make sure that the hip crease is below the knees at the bottom and achieve full hip and knee extension at the top. Pretty standard for a front squat. Again, rotating athletes as necessary. For my chest to bar pull-ups, arms fully extended at the bottom, the chest must clearly make contact with the bar below the collarbone at the top of the movement. Any grip and or kipping is permissible. Double overhand grip, underhand grip, mixed grip, however you want to do it, as long as we get contact below the collarbone. Again, third athlete resting and changing out as we need to. We've got our synchronized shoulder to overhead. Both athletes must lift the barbell to their shoulders and lock from the shoulders to an overhead position at the same time. Elbows, shoulders, and hips must be fully extended with the barbell overhead. And again, any style of overhead, shoulder to overhead can be used. You can do stretch press, push press, push jerk, power jerk, split jerk, or if you're feeling froggy and want to get a squat jerk, by all means. Again, third athlete is in the resting zone, waiting to change out his knee. And then lastly, we've got our bar muscle ups. This is our AMRAP. Athletes must start with a full hang on the bar, fully extended at the bottom, and then must pass through a full hang to a position at the top where the arms are fully locked out, chest above the bar. With this, you can swap out athletes as needed. This can be one athlete working at a time, changing out as often as you need to, and again, making sure to complete as many reps as possible. For our band division, very similar on the movements as far as the synchronization goes. The only difference is our jumping pull-ups, um, making sure that we will set you guys up at the height that's appropriate, usually six inches between the head and the, the rig at, the, at the, the resting position, making sure to get the chin over the bar. And then at the end, the remaining time for the max pull-ups, any style of pull-up is permissible. Only one athlete will work here as well, changing out as often as you need to. Love it. Last workout, not including the fundraiser workout. All right, so last workout here, workout number four, is gonna be called Quad Cake. Let's go over to the RX uh, workout first. It's gonna be 21 calorie echo bike while another athlete is performing 21 devil's presses at 35 pounds. Then we're gonna go into 30 toe to bar, 15 calorie echo bike while simultaneously doing 15 devil's press again at 35 pounds, 30 toe to bar, Finishing off the workout with nine calorie echo bike, and again, nine devil's presses. 
again with the 35 pound dumbbells. The band division, rep scheme is going to be a little different and the weight's going to be just a tad lighter. So we're going to start with a 15 calorie echo bike with 15 doubles presses at 25 pounds, 30 knee raises, 12 calorie echo bike, 12 doubles press at 25 pounds with 30 knee raises after that. Finishing the workout with nine calorie echo bike and nine devil's presses at 25 pounds. So you'll notice one thing, you are ending the workout on the calorie bike and devil's press. You're only doing two rounds of toe to bar. So after the nine, you're done, all right? It's gonna happen. Somebody's gonna do it. We'll yeah. stop you if you try. Yeah, uh, on the devil's press, chest to floor. Begin each devil's press with a burpee, ensuring your chest fully touches the floor. What they're getting at here is you need those dumbbells just wide enough for your chest to go through the dumbbell like a burpee and touch the ground. The dumbbells can be positioned either between your legs, which is suggested for efficiency, or outside your legs, all right? During the ascent, bring the dumbbells up, swinging through full extension overhead. You cannot break at your shoulders. Think kettlebell swing here, all right? So we full, full extension overhead. Movement overhead from the ground, use a fluid motion to swing or snatch the dumbbells from the burpee position directly overhead. Arms should be fully extended above the head with the dumbbells aligned with your body at the top of the movements. Let's work on toe to bar, right? Athletes must start in the hang position with arms fully extended. The feet must pass behind the line or of the bar on the ring and then come back to touch the bar between the hands, right? Both feet must touch the bar at the same time for the rep to count. In order to start the next rep, athletes must have their feet come back with heels passing the line of the rig again in order for the rep to count. One athlete must always be hanging from the rig in order for the reps to count. So is that right. saying on the devil's press and the echo? Or is that saying for the toes as well? That is just saying, so we're going to repeat the question. So is that, does that athlete hanging hang during the echo bike and the devil's press? Or is that meaning on the toes to bar? Great question. So one athlete must maintain a dead hang position on the bar while other athletes work on the toe to bar repetitions. So it's an active recovery. Let's talk about the flow of this workout. At three, two, one, go. Two athletes will begin the workout while one rest. One athlete will hop on the echo bike and accumulate those X amount of calories, 21 for RX, 15 for band division. While another athlete tackles the 21 devil's press with the two dumbbells. The athletes are free to switch between the bike and the dumbbell station as often as they would like until the 21 and 21 are completed. So those athletes may switch okay. until it is completed. Again, when we get to the toast bar, athletes need to be dead hanging while we're working on toast bar. So it sounds like in that dead hang position, if you're not able to get all 30 swapping, you know, you know, somebody will be doing toes to bar and then switch to the dead hang and then maybe instead of having to come off the rig, the athletes can then, somebody else can kind of kick up and start That's working correct. from there. Okay. That's okay. correct. For a BAM division, following the same standards, you're going to work through those calories and through those reps while an athlete rests and then as they finish, swapping is needed. Once they reach that final point, our third athlete will join them on the rig, again, swapping as needed for those movements. Correct. That wraps up our, our fourth workout. Now there's a fifth component to your score. Very, very important. Remember this, uh, this event is part of a larger organization that is raising money for charitable women's organizations. And so as part of that, you have an opportunity to fundraise for your team. For every dollar that you raise in fundraising gets you a point in that final event. And that final event <coughs> goes towards your final, your total score. Yes. So you can actually move up on the podium yep. or you can potentially get to the podium That's it. just by fundraising. We actually had a team last year that was able to make a placement jump due to just their fundraising because they did such a great job there. So keep in mind, yes, it's a competition. The physical aspect, aspect is important, but yep. the mission of the comp is the biggest picture, which is why in this competition specifically, fundraising actually acts as an event. Yeah, I love that. Um, like Travis said, it's a competition. You've got four full workouts. That fundraiser workout, y'all, is obviously going to a greater cause, but at the end of the day too, it really could make the difference between you know, fourth and third place, second, Absolutely. first place, right? Absolutely. So be as aggressive with your yeah. fundraising as you are with your training. There you go. Get out there, y'all, friends, family, coworkers. For any of our athletes that are not here at the Pit Stop, those that are joining us from other gyms around the city, around the state, if you have any questions about 
the clarification on the events, please do not hesitate. Comment in the video. Reach out to either Coach Pearson or myself. We want to make sure that you come. You have a, a fun and fair event. You feel like that you got out of it what you were hoping for. We don't want to have any confusion. We want the day of to be as little hiccups as possible. Yeah. If we can get ahead of it for you, remember we are here to serve you guys and to serve this greater cause. So whatever we can do to help you, please reach out. And uh, we're looking forward to it. Awesome. Thank you guys for joining us. We will catch you next time on Next on the Talk.